Welcome to this guide on the scientific method. To make the content in this video more accessible, click the closed caption button or adjust the playback speed. In this video, we will discuss why we study science, key terms connected to the scientific method, and consider an example of the scientific method in action. What is science? Science is the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experimentation. The scientific method is a process used to validate observations while minimizing observer bias. Its goal is for research to be conducted in a fair, unbiased, and repeatable manner. A hypothesis is an explanation for an observation or a question. You can prove or disprove a hypothesis by doing an experiment. Generally, a hypothesis is stated as an if-then statement. If you drop a ball, it will fall toward the ground. If I eat an ice cream sundae before going to bed, then it will take me longer to fall asleep. Theories are general principles drawn down from facts that can explain observations and can predict future events. An example of a theory might be Newton's theory of gravitation or Einstein's theory of relativity. Each is based on falsifiable hypotheses of the phenomenon observed. Now that we have covered key terms, let's look at an example of the scientific method in action. One morning, I look outside my window. I see my yard. I make an observation. My yard is full of dandelions. My neighbor's yard does not have very many dandelions. Why are there more dandelions in my yard? I'm going to clarify my question by researching the topic. I've done some research about soil. I've discovered that different types of soil have different nutrients in them. I wonder if the dandelion growth has to do with the type of soil. Using observation and research, I can make a hypothesis. Dandelions growing in nitrogen-rich soil for two weeks develop larger leaves than dandelions growing in nitrogen-poor soil because nitrogen stimulates vegetative growth. I'm going to design my experiment. First, I'm going to get two types of soils and put the soils in identical pots. One of the soils will be nitrogen-poor, the other will be nitrogen-rich. I will put dandelion seeds in both pots. I will put the pots in the same location and give them the same amount of water and the same amount of sunlight. This is important because I want to control the variables. Controlling an experiment means controlling all the variables so that only one single variable is studied. The independent variable is the one that's controlled and manipulated by the experimenter whereas the dependent variable is not. As the independent variable is manipulated, the dependent variable is measured for variation. In our dandelion example, the independent variable is the type of soil. One soil is nitrogen poor, the other soil is nitrogen rich. The dependent variable is what we measure as the effect of the two types of soil. The dependent variable is the growth observed in my yard. Scientists will often repeat an experiment multiple times before they reject or accept a hypothesis. I'll want to do the same thing by running my experiment several times. With each experiment, I will carefully collect data. It's time to draw a conclusion. I have four dandelions in my yard due to the nitrogen in the soil. Let's review how I made this conclusion. 
first, I noticed my yard was full of dandelions, and my neighbor's yard had fewer dandelions. After my observation, I did some research. I learned about the different types of nutrients in soil, and I wondered what would happen between the nitrogen-poor soil and the nitrogen-rich soil. I designed an experiment to test that, and I discovered after running the experiment for several times that my hypothesis was indeed correct. The dandelions growing in nitrogen-rich soil had more leaves than the dandelion seeds growing in nitrogen-poor soil. In this video, we have discussed why we study science, key terms connected to the scientific method, and looked at an example of the scientific method in action. For more academic support resources, read this video's description. Thank you for watching. We hope to work with you soon.